Hey guys, it's Hillary with Backcountry Pulse and we're gonna talk a little bit about chest and uh, torso injuries today. So um, your chest obviously takes up a lot of your body's surface area and so anytime you have a trauma, it's more than likely that the chest will be involved somehow. We kind of classify chest injuries into two different categories, one being blunt trauma chest injuries and one being penetrating trauma chest injuries. So for blunt trauma chest injuries, obviously like it sounds, it's a, a kind of blunt force uh, into the chest wall usually results in broken ribs um, which cause a ton of pain and they're kind of a difficult injury for the backcountry because you can't immobilize a chest uh, very well because you're using it to breathe all the time and usually that exertion increases when you're hiking out or walking out and it increases with pain and anxiety too so these folks often have a lot of pain um, and it's difficult to control some things you can do for these blunt chest injuries to try to splint them if people are going to self-evacuate is have them um, press against it with something so they can use their arm to hold pressure, a backpack, a strap, sometimes even duct tape. Um, if you wrap it from the spine around to the front, don't ever do a circumferential dressing around a chest because it limits mobility. But that halfway uh, dressing from the back spine to the mid sternal uh, often will provide enough stability to get someone out. Um, when you have multiple broken ribs in one segment, it can be called flail chest. Uh, it's called that just because if ribs are broken in multiple areas, there's a segment of the chest that's no longer moving with the rest of your rib cage when you breathe in and out. It's instead kind of forcing uh, pressure in and out on its own accord. So that can cause a lot of pain. It causes a lot of interruption to your respiratory mechanics. And often these folks will be really short of breath and have really shallow breathing to try to compensate for that. Um, next will be penetrating chest injuries. So penetrating injuries can be something that's impaled or it can be something like gunshots that are in and out. So there's no object there, but it was penetrated at one point. Um, these injuries are often surgical emergencies just because any Anytime something gets past your rib cage, that's the guardian of all your internal organs. And so there's great vessels under here. There's your heart, your lungs, liver, spleen, really vascular tissue, and you can lose a ton of blood with a penetrating injury. So these people often priority will be evacuation. Um, if they are bleeding, you can try to control the bleeding with pressure, but it may be difficult. Um, some places will teach a three-sided occlusive dressing for a penetrating chest injury, especially if it's what we call a sucking chest wound. And sucking chest wound just means that your lung space has been, the integrity has been interrupted, and so your lungs don't have the mechanics they normally have. Um, often you'll see that called a pneumothorax as well. And if there's an open wound from the environment into that lung space, that's an open pneumothorax or sucking chest wound. So those dressings need to be occlusive. They need to kind of hold pressure against the skin and they need to not let air communicate in, um, but often they'll let air communicate back out so that you won't build up pressure inside the chest. So we'll show you how to do this occlusive dressing and you can use any gauze you have or you can use a, a plastic bag or a piece of tarp, anything you have that could be occlusive. And we're actually gonna tape it on four sides for the sake of our backcountry rescue, just because of saturation, often this will come loose and it will have air able to escape from other means. So four-sided occlusive dressing over those open pneumothorax chest wounds until you can get someone to definitive care. So overall, in summary, guys, with chest wounds, expect your chest to be involved in a lot of your traumas just because it's so, such a big area of your body. Uh, understand the mechanism of injury that will lead you to either blunt or penetrating chest injury and try to control pain, do supportive measures the best you can and do any occlusive dressing on an open communicating wound in the chest. Thanks.